So the other way we can do it, sometimes we want to find an actual number, okay? Do it numerically. Sometimes we want, might want a more general result, some, a, a symbolic expression that we could use for any situation that is similar to this, okay? So rather than doing numeric integration, we actually want to solve the problem analytically using algebra and calculus and keeping things in a symbolic form, okay? The advantage of doing it analytically is you have a, a general expression that you can use all the time rather than having to go through the procedure every single time. The disadvantage is that you can't always get an answer. You can't always get a result using algebraic or calculus techniques because there are some functions that you just can't integrate and you just can't get a result. So you often have to make approximations uh, to get a, a result close enough. So what we're going to do is the same sort of situation, only instead of finding the electric field at some point off axis, we're going to find the electric field at a point right on the center axis. So we're, it's going to be a more symmetric sort of situation. If we have a situation where we're right on the axis, let's think about the directions of the electric fields in this case. Let's try a question. So same situation. We're now we've got eight segments here instead of six, but basically the same. The only difference is we now have our location A, our observation location, right on the center axis. Okay. So what's the direction of the electric field at observation location A due to piece number two here in this segment? It's a positive charge still. We'll assume this is still a positive charge. So it's got to be direction number two, right? If it's a positive charge, we're, we're talking about the electric field just due to that segment. And so if we're, if we were talking about the field just due to that segment, it's pointing directly away from that segment. It's going to be direction number two, okay? What about if we looked at a segment on the opposite side, segment seven? What's the direction of the field due to that segment? Same charge, it's the exact same rod, it's a charge rod. Got to be direction number eight, right? Okay, so what, what, you know what's coming now. In fact, I don't think we'll even have to poll here. Everybody, what's the direction when you add the two together? Direction number one, right? What if I add segments one and eight together? That's going to give me one, right? And three and six. Okay, so when I add everything together, the net electric field should be pointing in direction one, right? So we already know what direction result we should get. So that's sort of an internal check on what our result should be. So let's see if we can figure out a symbolic expression that predicts what the magnitude of the electric field is at that location. All right. So we're going through the same procedure again. We have we divided it up into pieces. We draw the delta E of one piece, which we know, so this is E net, and the delta E of one piece is pointing in that direction. And then we want to write the delta E in terms of uh, or a symbolic expression for the delta E. Okay, so here is, let's put, uh, have some symbols here. The total length is L. The total charge is Q. This delta Q is going to be Q divided by L. And delta X is again, uh, excuse me, Q divided by N, sorry. Delta X is going to be L divided by N. Okay, Q is the charge, total charge and the number of segments. So we can write an expression. We could say that a marker here. delta E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Delta Q over R squared times R hat. Well, I want to put the R in terms of known quantities. Let's say, uh, let's see, we should have ex expressed what this uh, observation location is. Let's say the observation location is 0, Y, 0. So it's lying right on the Y axis. And this location, the center of the, of the piece here is X, 0, 0, okay? So in terms of those two variables, we're going to have observation location minus source location, right? So we have 0, y, 0 minus 
x0, 0. So the r vector is negative x, y, 0. The magnitude is square root of x squared plus y squared. And then erase some of this r hat will be just the vector divided by the magnitude. So r hat is negative x, y, 0 over square root x squared plus y squared. So let's plug this back in. We now have the electric field, or delta E, being equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, delta Q over x squared plus y squared, the, mag the magnitude of that vector squared, times r hat, which is negative x, y, 0 over square root x squared plus y squared. Let me simplify this a little bit. I have the denominator and then multiplying by the square root, I have delta Q over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves times the vector negative x, y, 0. And again, I already know that my x components, when I add them all up, are going to end up being a net of equal to 0. So let's just look at the y component. E, delta E sub y is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Delta Q times y, so y times delta q, all over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. What do I, what in general do I want to do now? I have a symbolic expression for the electric field, y component of the electric field due to one segment. To find the net electric field, what do I do with all those segments? Add them up. If I have lots and lots of segments and they're all very tiny, what in calculus language does this summation become? This is an integral, right? So we're integrating dEy, essentially, okay? And this is an integral that we could do with one problem. There's just one problem, which is we want to put everything in this expression in terms of what's called the integration variable. What's the integration variable in this case? In other words, what's the thing that's changing as we move from one segment to another? The x value, that's right. So in this case, the integration variable is x. Well, y is a constant. We got x down here. But we've got to put the delta Q in terms of the integration variable. That's the, kind of the critical step here. So let's see if we can do that. We have a couple minutes, so let's see if we can do that. We said delta Q is equal to Q over N, or in other words, the total charge is equal to the total number of segments times delta Q. But we also said that delta x is L over N, so we can say that the total length is equal to the number of segments times delta x. If I divide those two expressions, I have Q over L is equal to N delta Q over delta N times delta x. N cancels out. I have the charge per unit length is equal to delta Q over delta x and I can solve for delta Q. Delta Q is equal to Q over L times delta X. And now my charge per segment is in terms of constants. The total charge is a constant, the total length is a constant, and the integration variable X, or delta X in this case. Okay? Finally, I can plug this all into this expression. And let me, let's see, let me erase this. Bring this expression over, we have delta E y is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 y times Q over L times delta x all over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. If we're talking about an integral, this instead of this delta becomes a little d and we're summing it up. Summing it up from where to where? What's our limits of integration? 
negative, okay, x is equal to negative something to positive something. What's the, uh, what's the x component of, or the x coordinate of this extreme end? Negative L, negative L? L over 2, isn't it? And over here, positive L over 2. Okay, so we're summing from negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. And those, so we can bring a lot of constants out. We have 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. That's a constant. Y is a constant. That's just the, the distance away. Q is a constant. L is a constant. And we're summing, or we're doing the integration of dx over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves from negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. The result you get, you look it up in a table of integrals or you plug it into maple or something like that, and you get a result. Let me just write down the result. The result is the electric field due to this charge rod is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, Q over Y times Y squared plus L over 2 squared. So that's the general result. Sometimes since since this is just the y component, we can call this variable anything we want. We can call this distance r. And so let me just make a variable substitution again. Just call this r. So this is a the formula for the magnitude of the electric field due to a charge rod along that center axis. And it will work any time we have this particular situation. If we want to find the electric field of a rod along the axis, we can just plug into that result. Okay. There's an approximation. We'll talk about that next time.